time for us to answer your questions. Welcome back to GTN Coaches Corner. Yeah, where we're your personal triathlon coaches. Leave your question down below any of our videos using the hashtag GTN Coaches Corner, and we could be answering your question in our next video like this. So today's Coaches Corner, let's get straight on with it. First, this question from Jabanski, and he says, hashtag GTN Coaches Corner, to wonder Heather, the amazing James, and the incredible Mark. Should we wow. start there? Flattery, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Whether I'm riding my stationary bike or running outside, my wrists ache and often go numb. Are the wrist workout stretches to that work to reduce discomfort or am I consigned to another form of pain while riding? Oh, oh. Well, riding doesn't have to be painful. I mean, yeah, no. it's it's hard work and it's gonna hurt a bit, but you shouldn't really be feeling wrist pain. If you're feeling on all your bikes, including your stationary bike, it's almost certainly a setup problem. Basically what's happening is you've got too much pressure on your wrists. Basically you want your weight to kind of be mostly on your saddle, some of your weight being taken by your wrists so that you've got that control of your bike, but you don't want a lot of your weight being on your wrist. So what it sounds like you've got is probably more than half of your weight or at least half of your weight leaning forward onto those wrists. Maybe your front end is a little bit too low or maybe your saddle is a little bit too high or something like that and it's basically putting too much pressure on those wrists. You're feeling it on all your bikes outside and indoors, uh, so that's probably the issue. If you're having this only outdoors or mostly outdoors, then it could be a few other things. Yeah, I mean, it's gonna depend as well on what type of handlebars you're using to start with. So if you have got a straight handlebar like in a mountain bike, then you are gonna be just having your wrist in one angle and it's gonna potentially put a lot more pressure. So if it's a road bike or you're riding on the road and you've got the option of looking at swapping your handlebars or even changing the position that you have your hands. So if you have traditional road bike handlebars, then you've got three options. You've got the, the top, you know, the, the sort of traditional hands on top, or you can have your hands on the hoods or on the drops and just rotating your arm that smaller amount will automatically put your wrist more in line with your hand and it takes the pressure off that way or if you are a triathlete and you're watching this and you've got some TT bars then put them on your road bike even and that could be another option yes that's probably more specific to racing but it's all about finding that right position that, that James talked about yeah as far as exercises go to solve this there aren't really so many exercises so much as how you hold your handlebars. If you are finding that you're holding your handlebars a bit too tight, that can add to the stress on your wrists and that can then also add to wrist pain while you're riding. So practice holding really lightly while you're riding. You really don't need to hold really tightly to your bars. Uh, even if you're mountain biking and going down a really bumpy trail, you still should be holding really lightly, just holding enough to hold the handlebar, not squeezing the death out of your, out of your handlebars. If any of these things are your issue, they're fairly easy to fix, but we would say that your issue is probably your setup and what you should do is head over to an expert, maybe to your local bike shop, and make sure that that setup is right to take some of that pressure off your arms and off your wrists and you might find the problem just goes away. It is definitely not a pain you need to deal with. Yeah, I think, I think finally, which hopefully isn't your situation, but if you do have a lot of pressure building up around your wrist, you can actually end up getting something called carpal tunnel syndrome, which is basically when there's not enough room for the tendons and everything to flow under a band on your wrist. And if you are getting consistent pins and needles in your hands of after cycling as well, then it's definitely worth seeing a doctor or a medical profession for that. But hopefully from the suggestions we've come up with, that will solve your problems and you'll be able to ride pain Free. the only pain should be in your legs yeah well next we have this one from Stuart Little most age groupers will likely only have time for one strength session a week on top of normal swim bike run training if only one 60 to 90 minute session in the gym is achievable what exercises would you recommend for triathlon let's say top five or six exercises assuming no obvious weaknesses well you're totally correct Stuart that obviously time is uh, of an essence for any age group athlete and it's up to you whether you want to prioritize fitting gym in because at the end of the day you've got to get your swim bike and run and if you feel that the gym's going to help you then you need to work out how to do that and if you are lucky enough or you've worked out your time that you've got 60 to 90 minutes a week then look at how you want to use that do you want to do one big session which could impact the rest of your training or could you maybe even split that in two and fit it in around your training that way and then is it because you want to work on some sort of smaller issues and make it more of a prehab or do you want to try and get stronger throughout the season there's a few questions you need to ask yourself yeah if you do if you're using it to get stronger if you want to build strength and maintain your strength using your gym work then you want to do things that work the major muscle groups that you're using in cycling and running and swimming. So that is things like deadlifts and squats for your legs, maybe calf raises if calves are, are an issue. Uh, and then for your upper body, 
lat pull downs, maybe tricep dips, those swimming muscles that are the major muscles that you're using in your swimming and biking and running. But if you're not using it for that, if you're using it more for a prehab, as Heather says, that is to activate the muscles that you're going to use in your triathlon, then you want to focus more on things like core and lighter body weight exercises to activate your muscles for your triathlon rather than actually kind of building muscle or building strength. Uh, these you can do in a much shorter session and you can do them before a major session if you like. You can, you can tag them on to another session uh, to get your body going and ready to go for that triathlon specific session. Yeah, so again, like on from that, if you are tight for time, doing a little bit of activation work before say a key run session, it doesn't need to be seen as the S and C as a, as a block of like, right, I've got to put this in my diary. You can just fit it in or even doing drills will be kind of crossing over onto that. So I think as the season gets going and you've got so much training to fit in, it's up to you what, working out what you need. And if you do want some ideas or to know a little bit more about some of those exercises, we've got various strength and conditioning videos on the channel that are there separate. So go check those out. Igalan writes, G hashtag GTN Coaches Corner. Before triathlon season, I always do some races. Last weekend, I did a half marathon that I've been running for the last few years. I planned my pacing through the different sections. There are some climbs, as well as my nutrition, hydration, etc. Nutrition rise after a good warm up and 15 minutes before the race, I ate one gel, then another at kilometer eight, and the last one at kilometer 15. So hopefully that'd carry me through to the end. But around kilometer 19, suddenly my legs felt like jelly. It took all my will to keep running in the last 2.5 kilometers at four minutes 35 per kilometer. Did I make do I was a short on gels or maybe I could have been something else. I took a good breakfast three hours before the race, was well hydrated and drank during the race, etc. Thank you. Well, uh, it could have been something else. It could have just been your fitness. Oh. Now, it sounds like you got your nutrition pretty good. I, I actually can't see any fault in what you no. did. He had a good breakfast before, he ate a gel 15 minutes before, and then he ate one at eight kilometers, another one at 15 kilometers. That, as he says, should definitely have seen him through the race. I can't see any reason why it wouldn't. The only possibility there, nutrition-wise, that could have been at fault is that your body is just not used to that, that those gels are something that you haven't trained on, you're only using that in race. Uh, so your body's not actually absorbing it. It hasn't learned how to absorb gels while you're racing. So maybe you need to practice Taking some gels during your long slow run, your body can learn that there's fuel that it can get not just from the muscle glycogen, it can also get fuel from your GI tract that it's always there and ready to use. But if that is not an issue, if that is something you have practiced and you do do that in training, your body is used to using fuel sources from both the stores and also from your GI tract, uh, then I'm afraid the somewhat cruel answer is that you were only fit enough for 19 kilometers of that race at that pace. Yeah, I mean, it'd be interesting to know what you're actually training at pace-wise and whether you know, how long your long runs got up to, but more importantly, how long have those threshold sessions got you to and how do you feel towards the end of those? You almost want to see if you can replicate that feeling in training. So pushing yourself a little bit further, you know, this is obviously weeks before your next race, but just experimenting with finding out where your limits are because at the moment, like James says, your limit in the actual race at that pace, sounds like it is about there. Well, Egalen, we hope you haven't uh, upset you too much with that information. Uh, we do think that you were very close to your goal and that's what racing is all about, finding your limits and, and maybe exceeding them. Next time you'll pace it just a little bit better and you'll finish that race strong. So good luck for the next half marathon or whatever race you do have coming up. Uh, to round up this Coach's Corner this week, we have a couple of swim-related questions, actually three swim-related questions, starting with this one from Winkler Tribe. Yeah, so he says, I'm interested in trying a triathlon and my weak spot is definitely swimming. I can swim for 45 minutes straight, but I'm very slow and very inefficient. Should I just join a master's class or get a swim coach? And now another one before we answer that, because they do go hand in hand. Nathan McLean, I've been thinking a swimming coach might help me break through as well. I started swimming in 2018 and triathlon in 2019 and have been training with a master's group. I've been stuck at 140 per 100 for about a year. Thoughts? Well, both of you, swimming does take time I mean Nathan it sounds like you've had a very quick trajectory to get to 140 per 100 and you put long course as well which is um, pretty respectable but it sounds one of you is obviously in a club and one isn't and you're asking that question of whether you would benefit from getting a coach I think it's it is so broad out there as to what that coach can bring to you because you at the end of the day have got to do your drills have got to go and get that training in um, if you're not in a squad I would recommend you get so much benefit from training with a squad you get the motivation of it you learn from others and hopefully you 
get a good coach through that. So it'll be interesting to know how the master's coach, I presume it's a coach session, is actually working with you on your technique. But I think technique is going to be the key here to start with initially. And where you find that is, is a little bit up to you within reason. Yeah, I think the principle here is that swimming is a technical sport. You need to make sure your technique is right. And that's where you're going to make the most gains, especially if you're new to swimming, as both of you apparently are. Nathan, would be interesting to see what that that master swim coach is yeah. doing because clearly he's already got a coach with the masters but it sounds like he's just jumping in and doing the sets there's not so much coaching going but you can normally ask a master swim coach for a few tips and tricks and they can look at your stroke while they're looking at the rest of the squad and give you a few tips on your on your technique that you can work on either on your own or during the, the master swim session uh, so i would definitely start there before you hire an individual swim coach as far as winkler goes uh Either of those options is probably is probably best. You could either get a swim coach to look at your technique and improve your technique that you can then go off on your own and work on, or as Heather says, joining a master swim group is the best way to get better at swimming. Basically, you've got all the benefits of swimming with other people, all that motivation, all that uh, fun and enjoyment of it, and at the same time, you've got someone standing on deck who can give you a few tips and tricks and look at your, your stroke and improve your technique. All of those things come together. I would say absolutely a swim coach is necessary, but normally you can get, you don't need a, a standalone swim coach. Normally you can get that coaching through a master's group with a master's swim coach yeah. standing on deck. And swimming is about sadly, hours in the pool, but you obviously want to be making sure if you're quite new to the sport that you're correcting, uh, you're, you're practicing the correct stroke because if you're doing hours in the pool and doing it wrong, it's going to take longer to change. So bear that in mind as well. But good luck with your swimming journeys, especially for Ryan Winkler if you're thinking of doing your first try. Um, well, our final question that is still on the swimming theme comes from Mark Rodaro. He says, I know that this is not ideal, but with capacity limits in my local community pool and the need for pre-register, I'm only able to get in once a week for 55 minutes to work on my swim. Uh, my CSS is a 201 per 100. So that's people sharing their times here, aren't they? Is, is there, are there any drills or workouts that would maintain my pace or maybe even slightly improve my time over the winter months, at least until the lake unfreezes, and then I may not be restricted to just one swim a week? Well, we feel your pain, Mark. I think a lot of people have been affected by the, the swimming been cancelled basically yeah. over the pandemic and now even though it's not cancelled the pools are open you've got to book ahead of time and they all booked up ages ages in advance you've got to be there on a on oh. a sunday evening as they open the bookings for the rest of the week to book <laughs> it's all frustrating your it's, isn't it it's really difficult but if you can get a 55 minute block which he says he can every week that's quite a sizable chunk of time you mm. can do quite a lot with 55 minutes even if it's only once a week like you say it's not ideal to do all your swim training in a 55 minute block once a week but make the most of that 55 minutes and by make the most of it, we mean try and hit as many of those limiters in your swimming as possible in one 55 minute special session with a well planned out session. Yeah, so you can almost like break it down as you're doing different sessions, which will help mentally for that time to go. So include some drills and work on your technique. You can potentially do those at the beginning so that you're just sort of reiterating that good technique before you then go and do a main set. Or you could put a few in at the end as just a little reminder to keep your stroke on track. You can have a main set that's going to work hard. I'd suggest doing something hard because you want to make the most of this time. So something towards the threshold style of pace. And then you can do a nice cool down and also you're getting the volume in by adding in those extra easy swim so a good warm up good warm down and drills so you're kind of getting it's a little bit of a mixture but you're kind of getting everything as well as that key workout in the middle i would say get it written down beforehand so you can make sure that you hit that and you get the most out of that valuable yeah, time absolutely plan your time very carefully so that you use every one of those 55 minutes that you do have in the pool and then the other thing to really think about is as we've mentioned in lots of our videos over the pandemic doing some dry land training this can make a big difference to your swimming uh, it's not ideal it doesn't really feel like swimming uh, uh, but when you get in the water and when you do get back in those lakes when they unfreeze, uh, you can definitely, uh, you'll, you'll notice the difference if you've been doing dry land training. If you've been working on the core, if you've been using your stretch elastics, those kind of things, we do have some videos on the channel on that, uh, that can make a big difference. So when you do get in the water, you can hit it straight away and you can train that much harder when the pools open up or when the open water opens up and you can get some real swims in. Yeah, exactly. Now I need to now listen to our own advice and sort out my swimming too. But um, great questions as always, guys. Thank you very much for those. If it's triggered any questions you might have or you know what to do, it's hashtag GTN Coaches Corner. Leave those in the comments section below. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Give us a like if you have and hit that globe and subscribe.